Protesters and Andrew Brown Jr.'s loved ones are demanding answers after a district attorney said that the deputies who killed him were justified and will not face charges. The DA revealed body camera video of the 42-year-old's deadly shooting yesterday. Jeff Begays is in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. There is probably hours in total of this body camera video from this shooting incident. But whether that is released is going to be up to a judge. What we saw yesterday is what the DA here wanted us to see, which is what he believes is a critical 44 seconds of that shooting from four different body cameras. We want to warn you that what you're about to see is disturbing. Body camera video shows heavily armed deputies sitting in the back of a police pickup truck. They pull up on Andrew Brown Jr. to serve a drug related warrant. Go, 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 go. Brown is behind the wheel of the blue sedan as deputies close in on him. Brown then backs the car up and turns to the left away from officers. Deputies open fire and the car speeds away before crashing into a tree. District Attorney Andrew Womble says Brown's attempt to flee made his vehicle a deadly weapon. Mr. Brown's death, while tragic, was justified because Mr. Brown's actions caused three deputies with the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Office to reasonably believe it was necessary to use deadly force. Womble says Brown's car made contact with one of the deputies. In total, they fired 14 shots hitting Brown in the right arm and the back of the head. Brown was unarmed. You're saying he was threatening them, but then he's backing away and it's the officer going for the car. That is a threat. And I don't care what direction you're going, forward, backward, sideways. I don't care if you're stationary and neither do our courts and our case law. The district attorney's press conference was an attempt to whitewash the unjustified killing of Andrew Brown Jr. Ben Crump, one of the Brown family attorneys, says Brown was trying to drive away from deputies and posed no threat. The most cowardly thing you could ever do is shoot a person from behind where they're not posing any threat or harm or violence to you. And you can see it in that press conference that the district attorney was adamant about what he views as the facts of the case, that Brown, in the way that he reacted to the, the deputies pulling up on scene, turned that vehicle into a deadly weapon. And there have been cases in the past where courts have viewed vehicles in, in similar confrontations with police as deadly weapons. However, it's also important to note that just three of the officers who arrived on scene fired those 14 shots, meaning that the other four did not fire their weapons. And the question is, you know, did they perceive the threat differently? Anne Marie. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good observation. And we were watching that a uh, press conference um, live, but you were actually there. And I, it was difficult for us to really get a clear view of the video. Um, we know that the sheriff also said that moving forward, they will standardize uh, risk threat assessments uh, before serving warrants. But, you know, to my point that you were there um, versus what we saw, which was sort of washed out video. What else stood out to you yesterday in the remarks from the sheriff and the district attorney? Well, in the remarks from the district attorney, he began his presentation by showing us still images of the body camera footage. Uh, and I remember distinctly that one of those still images, which is one of the critical uh, moments of this encounter, showed one of the deputies in front of the car as if the car was heading straight for the deputy. But then once we were showed later on in the presentation, once we were shown the moving body camera video, that moment seemed entirely different. Uh, it seemed to me uh, that the vehicle was moving away from that deputy instead of going straight for the deputy. Uh, and that's important because right after that moment, the first shot was fired. Uh, and so that's why I questioned the DA about how he presented that body camera footage and the still images, because depending on who's looking at it, the way it was presented, you could get an, an entirely different view 
of what was happening at that moment, that critical moment before the first shot was fired. Yeah, and I got to tell you, Jeff, in all honesty, it wasn't really until I saw your story that I saw that different angle. Even though I watched the video, you know, it's it's really different um, when you're kind of not there in real life. But also, you know, I, I'm not sure if it was you that pointed out yesterday um, that, you know, getting a chance to see the video once, and there each video is about 40 seconds long, a little bit, is much different than pouring over it over a long period of time and seeing the, the minutes before and the minutes after. You get a completely different sense of what you're seeing. Um, and as a result, you know, there are growing calls for the release of the full body camera footage, including from North Carolina's governor and attorney general. What would it take for that to happen, though? Well, it is going to be up to a judge in this case. The laws uh, regarding these issues in North Carolina uh, make it so that it is the judge who will make the final final ruling on that, and that is what the DA here said yesterday. And you're right. I mean, it is important to see all of that body camera footage. Now, apparently, according to the, the sheriff, uh, he has reportedly said that uh, two, uh, two of the officers' body cameras were not on at the time. So that's important information as well. Uh, hmm. But to get the full picture, you really do have to see all of the video, uh, and and that is why you know in 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 terms of transparency, which is where a lot of police departments across this country are trying to go, and it, especially when you have a shooting like this, uh, where you have a, a segment of the community that is is not happy with what went down, they are protesting. They are demanding answers. It is important, and this is what we found over the years, especially since Ferguson and Michael Brown, that police departments have been moving toward more transparency. Get the video out there as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in other states, you know, the judges aren't involved in that decision. It is up to the prosecutors. It is up to the police departments. You know, they want to get this video out there to show uh, what really happened based on the body cam of footage that they have. And in fact, that's why there was this push to introduce body cameras more widely across the country uh, so that there would be more transparency when you have incidents like this for people to see uh, what is happening. And in a lot of these cases, you know, police officers are being cleared of wrongdoing because of the body camera footage. And so when you withhold the footage, it just creates more uncertainty, more questions about what really happened that day. Yeah, good points, Jeff. Jeff, thank you so much.